Chat, right now we're gonna watch True Crime Fan commits a murder out of curiosity. Now, this is what I'm scared about. You know, like girls, they just be watching true crime, people getting murdered and kidnapped and a whole lot of crazy stuff. And then I'll just go to sleep. Let's say I have a girl over and she's watching that. And then I go to sleep before her and she just hovers over me. Watching, lurking, trying to murder me. Dude, it's insane. It's 3 a.m. in South Korea. May 27th of 2023, so literally like a month ago, a taxi driver pulls over to pick up a young girl and her suitcase. He mm -hmm. pops open the trunk. He even offers to help her put it into the trunk, but she's like, no, I'm good. Don't worry. It's not a big deal. I can do it by myself. She's a big girl. She puts it in the trunk, closes it, slides into the back seat, and he glances at her in his rearview mirror. Oh, no. It's kind of late to be going on vacation. And on top of that, her destination isn't even to an airport or a bus terminal what? or anything like that. It's to the local park near the river. But who is he to judge? What time was it? 3 a.m. Oh, yeah. Okay. What? I mean, he was just thankful that it was a pleasant, polite, nice young lady rather than a drunk businessman, which is typically the clientele at 3 a.m. That's He's the like, first red flag saying river. B I'm not taking no one to a river at 3 a.m. Hell no. Quietly to the park. She directs him where to stop the car and she pays him. She slides out of the back seat and hauls her own suitcase out of the back of the trunk. Oh, Again, no. it looks really heavy, really, really heavy. She said, no, don't worry about it, sir. I can do it myself. I mean, the physical strength of the youth never ceased to amaze this taxi driver. They say their goodbyes and he watches with a little bit of curiosity as she practically skips into the park towards the grassy field. What, what a strange, strange girl. She looked like what? A middle schooler? A high what? schooler at most. She looked really young. I mean, what is she even doing alone at this hour? And where is she going with the suitcase in the park? He decides to take a smoke break oh, right no. then and there. He honestly thought that she probably would need a ride back. Run! He, yo, he's about to be next. Holy sh I mean, no taxi was going to stop in the middle of the park for her to get onto the taxi. True. It's near the river at 3 a.m. I think nothing good can happen to a young girl roaming around looking for a ride at this time. W taxi driver. So he's smoking it up and he looks up. It's been about, what, 15, 20 minutes? And there she is again. And he's just watching her as she walks out of the park towards him. And her suitcase looks very light all of a sudden. Oh, no. Because, you know... Earlier, it was dragging on the wheels. It was kind of forcing her body to lean a little bit forward to pull it. And now, now it's practically flying around as she's moving it about. The girl asked him for a ride back. The whole energy seemed strange. It seemed like she didn't even notice that it was the same taxi driver. And he kept glancing at her in the rearview mirror as he drove her to her destination. Oh, no. Something in his gut told him, this isn't right. Like something feels wrong. I mean, the whole, I mean, where would she have gone with that suitcase? And why would it be lighter coming out of the park? Nobody just throws away their clothes in the park. She might be a middle schooler, but there is this energy about her. He would alert the police and they found that she had been transporting a victim's dismembered body from the victim's own apartment <gasps> to that very park. The taxi driver had unknowingly transported human remains, dismembered human remains. Sh the chopped up body is insane. In the trunk of his car. Holy sh He had sat in the car with a young baby-faced killer, not once, but twice. Wow. Wait, wait, he called the police just because how suspicious it was? They searched the grassy field in the park. Wow. This case has recently gone viral in Korea for a number of reasons. I mean, that just the scary. brazenness of the crime. The CCTV They have it on camera. Look. The killer looking like a happy person. I'm going to show this to you. She's just skipping around with this. Oh, my God, dude. Remembered remains in her suitcase. She's got a cute little bob and it's almost bouncing about. People say it's so unsettling because she has this childlike mannerism to her. This energy to her. There's dismembered remains in the suitcase. But also, the fact that the killer was stated to have an unhealthy fascination with serial killers uh -oh. and an obsession with true crime documentaries. She if you watch Mur uh, Rotten, T what was it? Rotten Mango, average Kenji enjoyer. Stop! Actually, stop, dude. You guys always ask for true crime. Holy sh! If anyone gets those urges, don't act on them, please. And if you do, don't do it to me. Don't kill me, please. <laughs> I want to live. Killed, dismembered, and disposed of a victim because she, quote, just wanted to see what it feels like to kill. Oh, my God. I like Stephanie. 
Her storytelling is really good, and she has a new setup from last time I seen. Always, full show notes are available at RottenMangoPodcast.com, but this is a developing case, and as always, this is the information that we have as of now. Things could change, they could get worse. I don't know if we'll get too much information considering the privacy laws in South Korea. Mm. Also, as per South Korean laws, the victim of this case and her family have chosen to stay anonymous, so throughout this case, we will refer to her with the alias of Hannah. And with Anna. all foreign cases, we had our Korean researchers work on this case to get as much as of what we could that's out there and compile it in this video for you guys. So let's get into it. The victim, Hannah, was a young woman in her 20s. She was tutoring high schoolers in English. I would not say tutoring is an easy job in South Korea. It, it's a very serious job. Parents are picky, over-involved, very diligent in picking the absolute per that's not even bad, bro. That's not even like anything bad. In America, no one even gives a f like a zero f Yo, they'll literally send kids to school, don't even know what they're learning. They're, yo, kids ask for help and they're like, I don't know, fuck, ask your brother. Perfect tutor for their perfect children whom they believe are entitled to be the next Einsteins. So it, it's a difficult job, but Hannah liked it. She was a university student at a prestigious school it worked well with her schedule, and it made it easier for her to get a tutoring position to begin with. And she liked being able to help these grade schoolers get interested in English. She made the whole process fun for them and just wanted to be like a cool tutor. That was her genuine vibe. That's her goal. So in 2023, with all of the available apps out there, there is a platform for tutors. Tutors will sign up and they will be verified by the platform for having the specific credentials. They will verify with the- Chat, anyone want a tutor like me? I can tutor you, I can, I can teach you, please. Cool that they're a student. They will verify their transcripts, grades, everything. To make sure that these tutors that are online are being advertised, their background checked. It's basically a tutor securing app that parents are obsessed with. It's actually crazy. Parents will go on there and they will look for tutors in every single subject for their elementary, middle school, and high school kids. The demand for English tutors was actually pretty high and the pay was fairly good. So Hannah had a lot of parents messaging her, inquiring about her services, w. including the mom of a middle school student who was, um, this mom was very adamant about hiring Wait, Hannah. Wait, she got killed? She got killed by a middle school student? Holy shit. I thought it was a high school student. A fucking middle school? Originally, Hannah declined this mother's offer because nah, her house no. was so far away from Hannah's. I mean, she naturally wanted something closer because why commute if you don't have to? So she said, thank you so much. Like, I'm sure that your middle schooler will find a great tutor, but it's just too far for me. This mom really seemed to like Hannah, though. She even offered to send her daughter to Hannah's house, drop her off for these English sessions. Whoa. Hannah kind of felt bad. I mean, the mom seemed really desperate for her daughter to have an English tutor. Maybe she had an exam coming up. Maybe she was the only tutor that seemed to fit the mom's profile. It was strange, but she found it hard to say no. Besides, she really did like tutoring. She really did like helping students. May 26th of 2023, Friday, right around dinner time, so right around 6 p.m., Hannah slowly gets her house ready because this is the first day that this student is going to come over and they're going to tutor in English together. So she's cleaning up, wiping the table down, and she hears a knock on the door. She peers through the little camera and she sees a preteen student, a middle schooler. Kind of short bob haircut that's curled outwards like how middle schoolers do it. It kind of stopped at her chin. Her glasses would make her cheeks look even rounder. And in many situations, I think most people would look at this face and think, oh, like what a cute middle schooler. She's got like cute little cheeks. And she's standing there wearing her school uniform. So she's Hannah so good opens at the door and she's ready to start tutoring. There would have been no way for Hannah to have known that this little middle schooler that she had just let into her home was not actually a middle schooler. What? Chung Yu Jung was her name. She was not a middle schooler. What? Yu Jung was not 12 or 13 or even 14 or 15 years old, but rather 23 years old. She could have potentially been older than Hannah. We Yo. don't know the victim's precise age. The middle school uniform that she was wearing was purchased at a thrift store. And underneath it, she was hiding a knife. What? Within minutes of entering, Yu Jung established that Hannah lived alone. 
she pulled out her knife and viciously stabbed Hannah. She oh repeatedly God. stabbed Hannah in the neck, only on like a particular spot slash side. That's what a lot of the reports said, which would later indicate to a lot of psychiatrists that she had researched where to stab. She knew what she was doing. Wow. She also stabbed the same area on the neck over 20 times. Once the 23-year-old pretending to be a middle schooler finished killing the victim, she relished in the satisfaction of a job well done. She would spend the greater part of the evening at Hannah's apartment, possibly pretending as if this was her own apartment, even changing into the jacket that Hannah wore. She took a jacket out of Hannah's closet and what? wore it the rest of the night. The jacket that you see on CCTV camera is Hannah's jacket. CCTV cameras would catch this 23-year-old Yu Jung going in and out of Hannah's apartment, going back and forth from her own place, hauling cleanup tools, and other times she would bring a suitcase, which indicates that while everyone believes that this is a premeditated murder, she was underprepared. But more shocking than that was that she was caught on CCTV looking very relaxed. She's taken taxis to and from Hannah's place to her place to the store to buy supplies. She's bringing around giant suitcases from her house to Hannah's house. She's going to a local store buying bleach, knives. Dude, she's shopping around for murder equipment. Ash bags. That's crazy to me because korea you're seeing there's camera every corner korea is like the city i'm sure it's similar in china and maybe japan like the city of cctv what i don't understand that's actually crazy it's kind of scary chat when you think about it you can't get away with nothing and either yeah we're gonna go down kind of a few conspiracy routes later but it gets weird she brings this suitcase and all these supplies back to hannah's and she gets to dismembering the victim she spends oh, no. the rest of the night and into the early hours of the morning doing this she then stuffs unspecified parts of the victim's body into a suitcase and hauls a cab. Oh my God. And again, just seeing her with that suitcase out in the streets, just the way that she's walking is so nonchalant. She's almost practically skipping. People say she almost has this childlike demeanor, meaning that if we were to bump into her in the street, we would probably think, oh my God, I just bumped into like a little high schooler. Oopsie, sorry. Like, oh, she looks cute and innocent. She very much had a girl next door, sweet, innocent appearance that had viewers and netizens absolutely floored when they found out what was in that suitcase. Around 3 p.m., she puts- Why, can she try and get away with something? No, I'm just saying, like, it sucks. That maybe, I, maybe I do want to get away with something. Maybe I do want to get away with something. I'm just saying, mad cameras everywhere being watched? That's, I don't know. I don't know how to feel about that. I feel like you have no privacy or something. The luggage into the trunk of a taxi, directs the driver to drop her off near a wooded area near Hopo Station. This is near, like, the Nakdong River, and reportedly, the killer, Yu Jung, she loved going on walks in this park. This was her favorite spot. She gets dropped off by the taxi driver, walks into the grassy area, and starts scattering the remains of Hannah. Wow. Seoul University forensic She'd professor even would dig? say that even the grassy location by the Nakdong River could have been planned. The tall grass by the water, it holds a lot of insects and disinfectants, like um, I'm assuming it's like pesticides, that would accelerate the decomposition of the body parts within a week. So if she had not been caught by then, there's a high chance the body would have been hard to recognize or even how to ID the body. Professor Yu is quite certain that she knew about all of this, which is why she chose to go this far with the body and even get in a taxi to scatter the remains at this park. Perhaps her frequent walks around this park made her familiar with the area. It made her want to leave a body here. Mm. Now, it's all going according to 23-year-old Yu Jung's plan, except... The taxi driver. She believed the taxi driver would not be able to tell the difference between a girl traveling with luggage for vacation at 3 a.m. versus a girl traveling with luggage full of body parts. The taxi driver would call the police and it was very quickly traced back to Yu Jung. In a show called We Want to Know in Korea, it was revealed that another bystander actually saw Yu Jung throw away this huge trash bag of bloody blankets, oh no. bloody leggings, before she walked away with her rolling suitcase. Again, just five hours later, she was arrested. Wow, that was fast. Yeah. Now, side note, there was a rumor circulating that the taxi driver had gotten out to help Yu Jung unload her luggage from the trunk. And as he was trying to help her, he had touched the luggage and felt that it was wet upon impact. Ew. The rumor was that he got back into the taxi. And you know how like the car lights turn on when you open the door? Yeah. 
And he briefly glanced at his palms and they were dripping with blood. Ew. That is a rumor. From what I can tell, someone anonymously came out and said that they were a colleague of the taxi driver and that didn't happen. He just noticed that the weight difference and where she was going and all these suspicious things added up for him to call the police. He did not see blood. He did not feel blood. You know, like for him to call the police, he must have some kind of like that evidence, gut something. feeling that you're like, I know I'm not going to be able to sleep at night. And it must have been so strong. And that must be really, really. Dude, in America, in America, you're not getting none of this. I'm not going to lie to you. In America, you you call the cops at 3 a.m. <laughs> They're like, what you want? They treat you like a, they treat you like a drive-in McDonald's, bitch. <laughs> they don't give a fuck, dude. <laughs> yes. Bad. I wonder if he's actually thinking, oh, my God, is this a body yes i did see a lot of netizens say the fact that um it's speculated it was a male taxi driver the fact that a male taxi driver that has probably seen so much in south korea so many bizarre things at 3 a.m 4 p.m 5 a.m you know any time of the I day i feel bad for like uber with drivers this little girl with mm. luggage unsettled him so much because i think it's one thing if a girl is driving and there's like a creepy man with luggage we're already on guard Mm -hmm. There's always this feeling of like, mm, I always think something is wrong. But for him to be this upset and unsettled by what looks to be a middle school girl, it must have been bad. I know, there must girl. have been some sort of, I, and I hate to say it, like some sort of energy that she was giving off, like mm -hmm. some sort of weirdness that was yeah. happening. So the police rush to the field where they find the scattered remains. And with the help of the taxi driver describing what she looked like, approximately where he picked her up and where he dropped her off, she was quickly located and arrested. W snitch. Authorities asked her, why would you do this? How could you do this? Who did you do this to? Because at this point, they did not have an idea of the victim. Oh, wow. Now, upon arrest, Yu Jung seemed very calm and collected. She was young, just 23 years old, but when the police were questioning her, she didn't seem that alarmed. She just very calmly explained, Well, the dismembered remains that you saw, if you must know, they were my baby. I what? delivered the baby at home, and I killed it because I don't want to be a mom, obviously. What? I'm young, I was going through a psychotic break, and I killed the baby and scattered the remains. I'm not sure how she thought that she could get away with a lie like that because very easily you could pick up some of the remains. I'm sure that there are medical examiners that can give you like a brief, hey, that's not a baby's bone. I'm also not sure how she had so much confidence, even though this is- <laughs> Like, that was my baby. I didn't want it no more. <laughs> Ma'am, why is your baby size 12 in shoes, bitch? Why does your baby have big feet? <laughs> I'm sorry so easily medically debunkable. I mean, her body doesn't even have evidence that she was even pregnant. So after arresting her, the authorities also found Hannah's ID nearby. This was left near the remains, along with some bloody clothes and other body parts. Jesus. So now they know who the victim is. They go back to Hannah's apartment. They find more evidence of the crime and they tell Yu Dong, like, that's not your baby. We know it's not your baby. Give us the real truth. Mm -hmm. That's when she starts complaining of stomach pain. She's like, oh, oh my stomach hurts. I, oh my God, I'm going to die. Because oh. she's in police custody. See, this is where the police are better than me. Because if you've committed like a blatant murder and you're telling me that your stomach hurts. I'm going to yourself. You never told me that. You and your stomach can hurt for the rest of the interrogation. Bats. You're not going to die. Okay. Why should I care about you when you don't care about human life? Mm -hmm. But because she's under police responsibility, they rush her to the hospital. And surprise, surprise, she's lying. There's nothing wrong with her. So after the hospital debacle, the police bring her back into the interrogation room and they ask her about the events of the previous night. The police also take her phone and they start searching through it. And, you know, they just have so many questions. Did you know the victim? Did you target this victim? Why would you do this? How long have you been planning this? Are there other victims? Are you working with someone? She clearly was not being the most honest person. So the police, they start going through her phone and we're going to come back to all of her lies. Oh, no. But let's go through the phone first. Oh, no. The police check her phone, hoping to get some answers. They found Dude, a they're about to see. I'm going to be honest. I'd rather twerk butt naked than let someone go through my search history. Oh, God, bro. My shit probably crazy. I don't even, I don't even know what's in that. I wouldn't want anyone to go through. If I ever die, I need like a chip that's like in my head that as the moment I stop breathing, bitch, instantly blows up my house or some shit. Like it just instantly fries everything like that. Full search history where she had searched online for tips on how to hide a corpse. Holy shit. She also shit. had watched a ton of true crime documentaries allegedly feeding off on um, 
It said that she just really wanted to know what it felt like to kill. Yeah. We're going to get back to it. Wow. But something the police rarely see was that her phone was empty. What? Just like everything. Not like she had wiped her phone and deleted everything, but digital forensics revealed that Jung Yoo Jung, her phone, she was not in contact with a single person. Oh my she God. had no contacts in her cell phone, which I know some people don't save contacts, but she had no messages, no calls coming in or out, none, nothing, no friends, hmm. no family, no, no social media interactions, no one was contacting no her. No In this day and age of 2023, how nearly impossible is that? She was truly- I'm beyond, I never even say my grandma's phone number. Yeah, I'm going to hell. Almost like a ghost. But you're coming with me, Chad. <laughs> you might be next. Chung Yoo Jung was born in 1999. Very young. She, wow. um, like a lot of people, was born into a pretty volatile house. Her parents were always busy working. They were too busy to take care of her. She was sent off to live with her grandfather. And he was the exclusive sole guardian throughout her entire childhood. Mm -hmm. Which I think is interesting. So in a lot of cultures, and Korean culture as well, it's common for grandparents to move in and raise the grandchildren while the parents are busy working. But That's her so grandfather was listed as her sole guardian. So, I mean, that to me indicates whether her parents were divorced or they were not present at all in her life. If it was to the extent of negligence or abandonment, I'm not sure. But the fact that her grandfather was listed as her sole guardian, I think something did a happened job. with her parents. I'm I sure fall. it probably impacted her in some way to not have her parents around, to not having this loving dynamic that a lot of kids have. But I mean, it's been proven time and time again that a child's first example of a relationship is with the parent. So, we don't know. It's just something to consider. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, we have no idea what happened, if anything, but we know that it wasn't the most stable home. Regardless, growing up, Yujung was regarded as a very specific word that I've never really heard in cases. Oh, no. Invisible. What? Not just quiet, not just shy, not just introverted, but invisible. Her former classmates said, if you said hi to Yujung in the hallway, like if you waved to her in the hallway, she would never say anything back. She wouldn't even smile back. She wouldn't nod in acknowledgement. She wouldn't even weigh back. She would basically just ignore your existence. Oh, hell no. They said that Yu Jung never spoke or replied to any of her classmates. So if you were a classmate and you were asking her a question and she knows you're asking her a question, the room is silent and you go, hey, Yu Jung, can you pass me that? She wouldn't even look at you. She would not respond to you. If it was an elder, like a teacher, authority figure, or even a neighbor, if they asked her a question, she would avoid eye contact and answer just yes or no. Outside of school, Yu Jung never even left her home. Neighbors reported almost never seeing her out, walking around, hanging out with friends, going on walks with her grandpa, inviting friends over, nothing. <laughs> She only responded with yes or no. Holy, yo, she's crazy, chap. It's stated, and this is kind of random and super specific, but Yu Jung hated talking to people. But if she were at the convenience store and she was owed like a penny back in change, most Koreans stated that they just wouldn't ask for the change. They'd be like, oh, keep the change because they don't want to walk around with this penny. They don't know exactly what to do with this penny. It's just kind of a hassle. Yu Jung, the person who hates talking, would ask for that penny back no matter what. What? That was like the one time she was very vocal. She's like, give me my penny back, which is fine. It's she's entitled to it. But people just thought it was kind of interesting to That's know. That's weird. Contrary to a lot change. of speculation, Damn. former classmates also stated Yu Jung was absolutely never bullied. So as far as we know, nobody picked on her. Nobody forced her to retreat into her shell and go unnoticed. Nobody verbally, physically hit her. Nobody bothered her because she wouldn't even wave back at you. This is a it's family like she thing would now? just float through her childhood like a ghost. This seems to be like a choice that she made for whatever reason. She would be so good at being unnoticeable that she could walk into a room and no one would look up or even hear anything. Her presence was unknown. She was unseen. She's an X-Men. She's a fucking X-Men. She was unremarkable in almost every way. We have no idea if she desperately desired to talk or to say something or wanted someone to listen to her as if, um, 
She was invisible and she didn't want to be. She just couldn't, she couldn't stop. Maybe her brain blocked that part of her life or blocked that part of her socialization. I don't know. Or on the flip side, you could argue that this was a choice. She didn't like people. This was her own little rebellion to not talk to people. She was deliberately ignoring them. Mm. But she did kind of unsettle her former classmates. So they never bothered to get to know her, but they reported that she would sit behind curtains alone. So like imagine there's a curtain. She would just sit behind it. Wait, She's like what? hiding herself, but not really hiding herself because you would see that there's a human behind the curtain. And the yeah, if I'm not gonna lie, I don't know if you could get um, guns in, in like Korea like you can in America, but she would be my best friend. I don't care if she can't talk. She would be my best friend. Ooh, you can't. Yo, if you could, it'd be a wrap for that school. I'm telling you that right now. Dude, oh, my guns laws are strict. Mm, happy they are, the dude. Shoes, and then you'd be like, why is Yu Jung behind the curtain? Sometimes you would hear crunching noises from behind the curtain. What? The and she'd be behind the curtain eating snacks. <laughs> Weird. Damn, they really changed voices and everything. In America, they just got their face all out, and you got some asshole that's like lives across the street. Just yeah, no, that motherfucker over there. I saw him kill his wife. He was fucking insane. He pulled out a tire iron, hit him across the head like this. Hoa bam, hoa bam. You know what I mean? Like the difference is crazy. A we have no named privacy. Lee Soo-jung was interviewed about this case, and as an expert in teen psychology and behavior, they stated that she was very, she had unusual behavior for a teenager. They said that adolescent ages are a time of pure curiosity of your peers. You want to know what your peers have to think, have to say about everything, how they dress. Oh, that's some bull. I'm gonna be honest. I don't give a f about none of that. I don't give a f about none of that. Maybe I'm a psycho killer too, dude. I don't give a f about none of that. You think I give a f about Timmy? What what Timmy doing after school? That motherfucker got on some nice clothes. I already know what he doing. He gonna go play golf with his daddy, and I don't got no daddy, so I'm just go home angry. I ain't here. I'm a bit of a... I have I have this on the edge. Didn't even notice. Why didn't anyone tell me? You want to get to know everyone your age. You have this like innate desire to understand them. I really don't want to be part of your peers. This is not like anything we've heard. Yeah, this one's very weird. And it, it's gonna get weirder. So far it's weird, but it gets weirder. It gets weirder. The professor stated that if they were to evaluate this type of behavior, they would categorize it as psychopathic tendencies oh. and or behavior that is being displayed at an early age. Oh. So Yu Jung puts in as much effort into her schoolwork as she does getting to know her classmates. Another thing that stood out to former classmates is that Yu Jung was never angry. She was never upset. She was never depressed. She never had this like passion against everyone. Like, oh, I don't want to talk to any of you guys because I, you don't understand me. I stand out. I'm different. She never had that. Mm. She just seemed so utterly neutral about everything. So incredibly passively indifferent. Scary. And in hindsight, a lot of people said that might be scarier. Yeah. But she still managed to graduate in 2018 from the Kyungi Girls High School. She had no clue what she wanted to do with the rest of her life, which, you know, is very normal. But she also had zero intention of trying to explore things and figure it out. After she graduates high school, Yoo Jung had no social outlet. She had nothing on her schedule that would force her to interact with people, with teachers, like high school did. Like, she doesn't have college. She has become totally disconnected from society the day she graduates high school. She would stay in her room all day, no connection with anyone. Hold on, hold on, hold on now, Stephanie. Hold, hold on, friendly fire now, Stephanie. She would tell her grandfather that she was holed up in her room studying for the public government official exam. But it is clear Yu Jung used this as a delay tactic, an excuse to have in her back pocket if her grandfather ever noticed that she has no social life, that she's not getting a job, that she has no plans for her future. St Stephanie, friendly fire, Stephanie. I'm getting real tired of it, Stephanie. Friendly fire. She would just milk the crap out of studying for this exam for the next five years. Years. Every day it was, oh, you know, Grandpa, I'm studying for the entrance exam. She was receiving financial support from her grandfather while she studied. He expected that she would pass and afterwards she would find a job and she mm. would get paid and hopefully pay him back for all the hard work that he's done because he's a grandfather now. Wow. And I'm sure that there were even moments that the grandfather was proud of her because she never spent time hanging out with friends or just doing nothing. Wow. She was always studying. She seemed so dedicated to her studies. Now, if you think that he's in on it or gullible or that he should have known, 
it's a different generation. He didn't even、mm-hmm. know that you needed to have a college level proficiency in English to even qualify to take the exam. Which Yu Jung was clearly not proficient in English, and that's that's kind of something that is pretty easy to tell. And it might be why she chose her victim. She was, <laughs> yo, she got bad grades in English, so she killed an English teacher. What the f is wrong with her? Not only that, dude, Grandpa, open the door. You're gonna see your f n g granddaughter just binge watching Netflix true crime. Like, what the f are you doing, dude? <laughs> Now we're gonna circle back to that. In 2017, Yu Jung applied multiple times for a job as a golf caddy. She submitted her resume and wrote. After leaving high school, I started preparing for the college entrance exam. I enjoy being active and meeting other people, and I really want to try this role. Thank、mm. you. But once she got a call for an interview, she did not say a single word.、Uh. Even when the interviewer asked her standard interview questions, it was silence on the other line. Silence. She refused to talk. What? The recruiter was so confused because she's like, "You applied for the job. Why won't you talk? Because you applied for the job." It didn't look good in the recruiter's eyes, and of course, she didn't get the job. But when she found out that she was rejected from the position, she went as far as to call them back、What? and curse them out for their decision. What? She kept demanding to know why. Why was I rejected? And they didn't really want to tell her because, well, you were strange. You didn't respond to any of the questions. We thought you were a little weird. They didn't want to say that, so they just said, "Oh, well, we're looking for an English speaker, and you're not proficient in English." It is speculated that Yu Jung started developing a hatred for those who were good at English,、no. and maybe this is why she ended up online searching for English tutors to murder. No. Wow. Her victim Hannah was a young, successful, accomplished university student、wow. at a prestigious school who was also an English tutor. She was everything that Yu Jung was not. Wow. And that、Complete、may have、opposite. been why she was targeted. Now let's talk about her true crime obsession. But first, why was she even obsessed? Because of the lack of any contact on Yu Jung's phone after she was taken in by the police, the word Hikikomori has been coming up in discussions about her case.、Hikikomori. And quick disclaimer: I don't think that Yu Jung was, but there is a connection. We've talked about this previously on the Japanese serial killer cases that we've covered, but since it's been like over a year, let me give you a refresh. In Japanese culture, there is a phenomenon right now where adolescents and young adults have become Very reclusive. Usually, after graduating high school and into their adult lives, they will live in basically voluntary solitary confinement. Wow, Usu- that's so weird. That why would they do that? Shaking my head. They need to go socialize more and, and stuff. Ain't that right? YouTube comments. Wow, all of us just sitting here watching this video together, just like, damn, she she really talking about us. <laughs> Usually, in their <laughs> parents' home. Some of them will go years without even talking or running into their own family members that they live with in the same apartment. Oh my god! Oh my god! This actually might be me. I saw my brother like three times when I was living with my dad, bro. I swear. <laughs> oh my god! Not massive White House with a West Wing and an East Wing. I'm talking a three-bedroom apartment. Oh my god! She's talking about me. <laughs> Many of them stated they will coordinate their comings and goings out of their room to not run into a single human being. Wow. Sometimes these people will also go decades without seeing anyone outside of their immediate family members. Now, according to the Japanese Ministry of Health, Labor, and Welfare, side note, there is no good translation of hikikomori, but the Japanese government has defined it as the state of avoiding social engagement, education, employment, and friendships with generally persistent withdrawal into one's residence for at least six months as a result、six? of various factors. I'm like five years in. Holy shit! I'm actually yo, chat. I'm more. I need to go get friends. No, no, no. I, I actually gotta go, I gotta, go I gotta go out. 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 Damn, Kenji. No, 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 I gotta go out. I gotta go out. I gotta go out. It's not like I'm anti-social chat. It's just like, please get gym friends. The thing is, like, first of all, gym friends are lazy. I don't like gym friends because these motherfuckers. Oh, I'm gonna take today off. Oh, no, I don't think I'm gonna go today. Oh, oh man, my back really hurts. I don't think I'm gonna work out. The fuck up, gym. Okay, eat my asshole, dude. Like, I can socialize with people. You know what I mean? If anything, like, if I'm walking on the street and there's someone walking the opposite way, I'm always gonna be like, Hey, how you doing? Hi, hello. You know what I mean? I, I say something first. You know what I mean, I, I'm social. Like, I talk to motherfuckers. It's just like. I hate it here. So while it's pretty difficult to get exact numbers, estimates say that there are at least over one million hikikomori in Japan alone. Damn. Probably close to a million in South Korea, and potentially millions in China. And Can confirm be- at least one in LA. 
become such a problem for Japan and really everywhere else. But the Japanese government even released a guide for the hikikomori on what to do in the event that their parent passes away. What? Oh, for them. Yeah. Because there was、um, a case where a hikikomori, his mom had passed away in the house and he did not report her body or do anything. Oh my God. So I was looking through a Reddit. That's insane. A guy, like, listen, if your mother dies, make sure to tell someone, okay? We, we won't, you can stay in your room. Just make sure to tell someone. For him to understand the mindset of the community. And I don't think that Yu Jung is one of them. And I want to clarify that Hikiko Mori are not dangerous people. Yu Jung is not one of them. I mean, she could go、They、out. They just sound like hella lazy and, and have anxiety, bro. Like, you have so much anxiety. Like, you. Like, you know, like DoorDash, how you can have, like,、um, like, leave it at the door or hand it to me. I'm putting leave it at the door every single fing time. If I open that door and you're there, bro, you're going to get a stare. I'm going to sound like this b- that was murdering people. I'm going to stare at you like this. What the f you want? Drop the food. Drop the f- I'm going to close the door, drop the food, and then when I open it, you don't be here.、B-. I got a bat. I'll go get it right now. Yu Jung is not one of them. I mean, she <laughs> could go out. She liked to take her little walks in the park. The only same consistency that they have is that they had no social interactions with people. <laughs> There is a Redditor who wrote If something forced me to go outside, like a sudden fire inside my house, I would be unable to step outside into the world. Another Redditor said, See, it sneaks up on you.、Mm. You think it's okay for a month, and then you do it for six months, and you think it's not that bad.、Mm-hmm. Then you do it for a year, and then two years. And then you realize that all of your peers are light years ahead of you economically, socially, mentally. You feel like there's no way you can even try to catch up. Wow.、Now. So, what's the point? It's been known to psychologists that the more one doesn't socialize, the less they know how. It's something that you can technically forget. It's like talking, you have to learn to talk again.、True. And it's this vicious cycle of not socializing for even longer. Like, I'm, ch- I'm sh- at, at small talk now. Bro, on、oh、God, I. Can hate small t- I just, I would rather sit in silence, mad awkward, than say anything. If I'm being completely honest with you, like, I know how to do it, but like at the same time, it's like, it's like, fucking, like I'm rusty at it. You feel me? Small talk is so painful, bro. Yeah, and honestly, I don't give a f- if I could be honest. The reason why I don't like small talk the most, I don't give a f- and does that make me like a serial killer or something? You forget how to do it and then repeat and repeat. It's happening in Japan. Like, a lot of people are not interesting. These mom- Don't got nothing interesting to say. They don't make me laugh. They don't make me think. They don't make me nothing. I'd rather fucking zone out in my own thoughts than talk to motherfuckers. If I'm being, on- if I could be honest, does that make me a serial killer chat? I don't know. Like, it's just a bunch of, oh man, did you see that show? Wow, I know this famous person. Wow, I can't believe this. I was at this concert. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck about none of that. I was fucking this bit. I don't give a fuck, bro. I don't know, dude. It's like talking. You have to learn to talk again. And it's this vicious cycle of not socializing for even longer because you forget how to do it and then repeat and repeat. <clears throat> it's happening in Japan, China, South Korea, the United States. Some behavioral scientists have credited this retreat from society to the overwhelming pressure of succeeding in Asia's work culture after、mm. high school. So, in China, some people actually attribute it also to the fact that the population has profoundly more men than women, saying that this puts so much pressure on men. I doubted you, Kenji, but you're actually real as fuck. Dude, I'm an open book over here. How do you think I'm real? Dude, you crazy? This is your first stream? You new here? And looking for partners, whereas、Gotta、women、be. can be a lot more selective. So, these men decide I don't even want to partake in this game that society plays. I want to completely withdraw. So, why is this happening all of a sudden in this day and age? Because of technology.、Mm-hmm. So back then, there were hikikomori in Japan, and most of them would read manga, they would watch like DVDs and stuff. But now with. Friendly the- fire! Friendly fire! Stephanie! Internet, people feel like they really don't have to go outside. Everything can be done online. They can watch shows, they can watch YouTube videos, they can talk to people anonymously without the threat of feeling exposed or vulnerable. They can go to safe forums that they can communicate with. They can do everything online, especially in places like South Korea, Japan, and China, where everything can be delivered at your fingertips in record time. It's so easy to never leave. I mean, I mean bro, also, also, hold on. With, with the conversations about like Reddit posts and all that. First of all, it's also, you gotta think about it like this. It's like a year round, like, let's say,、um, like a TwitchCon or like AnimeCon, right?、Uh, a TwitchCon or AnimeCon, you're gonna be in one spot and there's everybody has that same common interest. So it's easy to socialize, it's easy to talk, right? Normal, every day to day, you're not gonna get someone that you can relate to and like, oh, you really like this anime? Wow, you watch this streamer? You see what I'm saying? But like on a forum or online, it's easier to just find your interest. So it's easy to just delve into that. You know what I mean? And then that way you're like in your own little bubble. 
And sometimes that could be negative because, I mean, bro, you can't hold a conversation for shit. But like at the same time, I stare at people on the street. Dude, I'm gonna be honest, I'll be like, I, I say hi. And if you don't say hi back, I'll be like, fine, fuck you then. <laughs> like, I'll be, I remember I was walking with my brother and he got so mad at me because I just kept doing it. I hit like five back to back to back to back and he got so mad. And then the funniest part, right? So, <laughs> the funniest part, right? I would hate you too. So I'll, I'll be like, how you doing? Have a good night. And it's like, all right, I'll go fuck myself. You know what I mean? Like if they don't say nothing, I'll be like, all right, I'll go fuck myself mad loud, right? So then, um, what's it called? He's like, bro, like, I don't know why you're doing that. Whatever the fuck he's like. And I was like, bro, dad do does it. What are you talking about? Right? And he's like, no, he doesn't. He doesn't do it like that. Whatever. So I, I talked to dad, right? And we, we asked dad. <laughs> we were like, okay, we're going to play it out. I'm going to walk this way. And you say like exactly whatever. And he said it the exact same way. <laughs> and my brother was just sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> it's so fucking funny but like i don't know yo my brother no, no no my brother's even worse than me we're in an elevator right we're going to the mall we're in an elevator about to go up to the mall this motherfucker we already have like we have it's me and him okay then we have like two couples so we have a couple on the right couple on the left the door opens and then there's there's a so it's like a, another couple, a girl and a husband, and then a fucking two kids and a baby in a stroller. And they all try to fit in this elevator, right? We're all thinking everybody in the elevator is like, really, like, really, bitch? Is this shit serious? Like, is this bitch serious? We're all thinking that, right? My brother loud as shit. Like, damn, I miss COVID when people would social distance. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm just like like he said it loud enough so everybody heard it. It's a small ass elevator, bro. It's a, damn. Ugh. Like people don't know. Like <laughs> like he, he's so loud. <laughs> he's right. No, he's so right. But like, bro, he's so real hilarious. And then I'm just trying not to laugh the whole time. I'm sorry. Okay, back to this. Back to this. Back to this. I'm sorry. I mean, it's gotten so bad. There's actually services where you can hire young, pretty women, and typically they're hired by parents of hikikomori, and um, they'll come and try to talk to the predominantly male community. Hmm. Like they'll come and talk to your son and try to lure him out of his room. Yeah. Yikes! It's estimated that this phenomenon is. Wait, wait, wait. What? Let me play that back. It's gotten so bad. There's actually services where you can hire young, pretty women, and typically they're hired by parents of hikikomori, and um, they'll come and try to talk to the predominantly male community. Like, they'll come and talk to your son and try to lure him out of his room. If my parents ever do that, I swear to God, I'm killing, I'm killing everybody gotta die. If I find out you was paid to talk to me, nah, fuck that. Every, everybody gotta die, dude. I might, I might be a serial killer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, that's so awkward. No, bro, because that's crazy. Yeah. It's estimated that this phenomenon is affecting millions of people around the world. And it's honestly very heartbreaking. It's just, it's a very lonely existence, I imagine. And again, I don't think that Yujung can be fully categorized as hikikomori. But regardless, she probably felt the effects of the lack of social connection and almost complete social isolation, which... Risk of that is mental health issues like depression, anxiety, substance abuse. You can even get chronic conditions like high blood pressure, heart disease, diabetes, higher risk of dementia because you're not socializing. Damn. And again, just another disclaimer, like most mental illnesses, the hikikomori lifestyle, I mean, this is typically only detrimental to the person themselves and maybe perhaps their family members who have to interact with them and try to provide for them and help them. But most of the time, they are just nonviolent, introverted, modern day hermits. Mm. There were a lot of hikikomori that were interviewed and they said, you know, it didn't matter because it just started like one or two days. I would just stay in my room and be on the internet. And I thought, this is nice. I like it. Someone said in chat, oh my God, I'm absolutely <laughs> like chat listen all you gotta do if you genuinely if you genuinely want your social skills up just go get a quick little nine to five like at, at like a fucking mcdonald's or at like a whatever you're gonna be talking to so many people that like you'll it's just you'll be engraved you're gonna be saying hi hello how you doing you know what i mean just to everybody just because it, it's gonna be fucking that no for real you know what i mean like you're good the fuck i hate talking i'm i'm telling you though you know what i mean you're gonna get co-workers all that shit. it's like the easiest way to socialize you feel me i remember i was working at a job they're like make sure no customer goes unnoticed make sure you say hello hi good morning to them every time you pass them bro i was following people around just hello <laughs> this is me hey hey good morning 
<laughs> Good morning, I noticed you. Just know you're loved, okay? Goodbye! I'm sorry, do you need something? Do you need something? Hi! Like, bro. Fucking terrible, dude. Kenji, a good fit for Chick-fil-A. Hell yeah, dude. I'll be changing tires and shit. Talking about some my pleasure. Okay. And then it was a month, and then they were thinking, this isn't too bad. And then six months crept in, a year crept in, two years crept in. And then a lot of them report feeling like it was too late. Mm. Like they had already ruined their life. Damn. Mm. They felt like I already spent the most formative years, the most important years of my career. There's no way I can get a job in the competitive Asian work economy. Like people just out of college of prestigious colleges, they can't even get a job. I've been doing nothing for the past five years. How am I going to get a job? A lot of them report deteriorating health, a lot of weight gain. And, you know, Damn. when you're in your room and eating cup ramen all the time and just staring at your computer, a lot of them report having um, a lot of acne and that Ooh. would just prevent them from going out even more. They felt awkward around people. They felt like everyone was staring at them weirdly. They just felt like they didn't fit in. And That's the crazy. Longer it Chat, I'm going to be honest. If you ever feel like that, just under please understand. Listen to my words very right 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 now and this helped me with anxiety so much i'm not gonna lie to you right when i came to the realization that no one cares like literally no one no one gives a fuck about what you wore today is gonna care tomorrow no one cares about what your hair looks today and then what it'll look like tomorrow no one gives a fuck. if anything the only thing they're worried about is what they look like you understand like no one gives a fuck bro you know what i mean so that's that when when i just had a realization where it's like no one really gives a fuck and they only care about themselves like to an extent like i, I say that because like okay let's say let's say you wear a, a stained t-shirt to school or something right and you got a fat ass like mustard stain on your shirt or some shit, right the next day no one's gonna care i mean maybe one person is like yo why are you worried about my t-shirt bro you're weird get the fuck out of here and then the next day no one cares again you see what i'm saying like no one cares it went on the harder it was to reintegrate back into society and so most of them just thought i'm just gonna stay with my computer that's it that's what i'm gonna friendly do. fire and yujung was kind of like that in the sense that she was obsessed with her computer friendly with fire her electronics and she was primarily obsessed with consuming true crime documentaries oh my god yo now don't let my dad or mom see this video on god bro holy shit. Like, they're gonna be like, see, that's why. That's why you need to go out more. That's why you gotta go out more. Oh my God, please don't. I know that most of you guys that are listening to this episode because you have an interest in current events and or true crime itself. Mm -hmm. Now, I can't speak for you guys, but that's how I started. I would watch a true crime documentary and I had nobody to talk about it with. And I just wanted to talk to someone about what I had seen, what it made me feel, how it made me think about the world, how mm -hmm. it made me think about the justice system. And I wanted to share these like thoughts and stories with someone. But I think, I think like if I really look back on why I started watching these documentaries years and years ago, mm -hmm. it kind of made me feel like I knew what was out there. Because mm -hmm. like it makes me feel like I know what kind of evil is lurking in the shadows. I know what kind of people, scary people are out there. So maybe I can prepare myself and understand some of the warning signs. Mm -hmm. So it made me feel like I was being... I'm going to be honest, dude. I feel like <laughs> this... <laughs> Never mind. Actually, never mind. I don't want to get canceled. What kind of people, scary people are out Take there. Take that out, so editor. Maybe I can prepare myself and understand some of the warning signs. So it made me feel like I was being proactive in my safety. It felt like it was safer to know than not knowing what kind of evil existed. Mm. And it eased a little bit of my anxiety. Like, that's kind of how I felt. And I read a lot of comments in here that say very similar things. That is not what you don't got out of it. Oh, no. She fixated on the killers of each documentary and she asked herself, I wonder how they feel. I wonder how it felt for them to kill. Oh my. And unlike most of us, she did not have a healthy human level of curiosity where we have other interests in life. Yu Jung did not care to even watch documentaries about cases of injustice or about all these cases that have gone unsolved that need people's attention or to help bring justice to all these victims' families. She literally watched these documentaries for inspiration. What? How do we know this though? So they found a bunch of true crime in her phone records, like shows, like Digital Footprint and... That is what a lot of psychiatrists believe. And she said that she wanted to feel what it felt like to kill. Wow. That's wow. another thing. There is Inspiration is crazy. I'm not going to lie to you. And and if you do get inspired by a killer, dude, true crime and stuff like that, dude, I'm going I'm to go. I'm going to go. Never mind. I, I'm not even going to say that out loud. That's not even funny. Never mind. Conspiracy that she actually didn't kill because she was obsessed with true crime. 
Like, imagine yeah. a true crime motherfucker. Like, some some murder was like, yo, this bitch took my whole flow. Word for word, bar for bar, bitch. That ain't inspiration, that's imitation, ho. F out of here. You gonna stuff the body in a suitcase? I did that first. I did that first. Like, she probably in hell arguing with someone right now. You know what I mean? Oh, she's probably locked up, but when she go there. So, I think this is where the whole video games argument kind of comes in. Mm -hmm. I don't think that there's a single thing in this world, especially a piece of media, like a documentary, video game, or a movie, nothing could make me kill someone. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that the same goes for all of you. Psychiatrists have actually come I out- I hope so, right, chat? 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 Right, chat? This doesn't make you- You're not getting urges, right? If you are, make sure to tell someone, tell your mother, and police and lock yourself up, please. Someone gonna be like, no, no, I don't know what she's talking about. I, I murder everybody. <laughs> I always want to murder everybody. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> and said, we don't know for sure if this is her motive. So as of right now, she's being labeled as someone who is so obsessed with true crime that she killed someone just to feel how it feels to kill. Scary. A, a couple of psychiatrists said, we don't know that for sure. Mm -hmm. We think that um, a lot of us are connecting these dots because Kenji, real question, would you? No, no, no. The only thing I genuinely, like, kind of wonder what it felt like was, like, medieval war. Like, not, like, guns and shooting and just, like, whatever. Like, modern warfare. I'm talking, like, medieval swords and, and, and fucking spears and just crazy stuff. And you're trying to storm castle walls. Like, that's what I wonder about. Because, holy shit. Do you know how much balls you need as a man to charge up to a castle with arrows raining down on you? Flaming oil and stuff for Troy. You know what I mean? Like that is crazy, dude. That is insane. And then, and then I just, you should try jousting. No, the fuck I should. I'm good, bro. I don't need to do none of that shit. Hell no. I'm gonna stay my. I'm a Akira, Akira Mori, motherfucker. Stop playing with me. As a society, <laughs> let me not say that. We feel better knowing, like kind of what I just said about true crime documentaries. We feel better knowing that um, there's almost a reason. When we don't know, it makes it scarier. So we're going to get into all of that. Mm -hmm. But anyways, she escaped her reality to exist and relish in the reality of being a murderer. She would eventually become so engrossed, allegedly, so obsessed that she had made up her mind and she was going to kill to see how it felt. Oh, my God. So we know how the crime went down. She was arrested and she tried to lie and said the remains belonged to her baby that she had to kill. And when that lie was exposed, the police found out who the victim was. She changed her story once more. Oh no. She stated, I did not kill this girl. I was just hired to dispose of her body. What? I am not the one who killed the victim. Someone else did it and I'm just helping because they promised me something in exchange. What would they promise you? I was promised Hannah's identity. What? She's saying, what? I just wanted to commit identity theft and identity fraud, not murder. Many psychiatrists would later speculate, while this is a blatant lie, she is the killer, but it does give insight into her own thoughts and desires. She wanted Hannah's life. Yeah. She was Damn. jealous of Hannah's life. She wanted her identity. And side note, police found a digital footprint of her watching the South Korean movie Helpless multiple times prior to the murder. And this is allegedly one of her favorite movies. It's a Korean thriller. The movie is about a couple who are traveling to meet the husband's parents in the countryside of Korea. They end up stopping at this rest stop and getting coffee. And when the husband returns to the car, his wife is gone. She's not picking up her phone. She just vanished. He's like searching through the rest stop. He finds a little hairpin in the bathroom. She's not in the bathroom. He drives all the way back into the city, goes to her apartment. The apartment looks like it's been completely ransacked. So he's like, what the hell is going on? He gets his cousin involved, who was a former police officer. And they find out that the wife has been stealing other women's identities uh, and is mm. probably a killer. It's like a dark and <clears throat> windy thriller, but the fact that that's her favorite movie, I don't know. Some people say, see, like she really wanted someone else's life and maybe she's trying to recreate the movie. Others said, what if she's setting Jesus. up some twisted alibi? What do you mean? Like some psychiatrists believe we can't trust a single thing that comes out of her mouth. True. So we don't know the motive. We don't even know if she wanted to take Hannah's life because she was jealous of Hannah. They said that this could be a well-spun fabrication. That she was watching this movie to find out her lie. I'm going to lie and say I was trying to steal her identity. Mm -hmm. Wow. So does that make sense? Yeah. So she's just constantly lying. Yeah. I mean, it's just we don't know at all. Probably anyway, the first the thing she thought of, like, you don't know. 
that she did not kill Hannah. She definitely killed Hannah. So they keep pushing, and Yoo Jung quickly changes her story once more, and she stated that she killed Hannah because she got into a fight with Hannah. And the police are fed up. They don't believe this, because why would you get into a fight with someone you don't know, and why would you trick them into being your English tutor if you don't even know them? Like, it doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. So they did not believe this lie either. And while she's being stalled by investigators, the cops were able to look up her family registry in the system and call Grandpa Jung, the man who raised her. I look in the chat and someone's just like, lying bitch. Reminds me of my ex. <laughs> oh my God. He rushes to the police station and his whole universe shattered that day. No. This was his only family. He raised her like his own daughter no. and he felt like a complete and utter failure. How could he have failed Korea so badly by raising a killer? Grandfather Jung rushed to the station and the police asked him to talk to his granddaughter to get the truth. He cried as he begged his granddaughter to confess to her crimes. He pleaded with her, just admit your sins for me. Do it for me and my integrity. And she, I mean, she had given her grandfather nothing except a lifetime of pain. And Grandpa Jung had given her absolutely everything. This was the least that he could ask of his granddaughter. And Yoo Jung confessed to her crimes. I don't know if she did it for love for her grandfather. Mm. I don't know if she felt like this is it. I mean, I'm going to have to fess up. I don't know what it was. Grandpa Jung would later be interviewed as he was hounded by the South Korean media. And Damn. he reported, I feel really sorry for the bereaved family because I'm a sinner who raised my granddaughter wrong. Damn. I never expected this situation. I never even imagined this. <laughs> When Grandpa Jung's neighbors were also interviewed after the fact, one of them reported, I mean, the girl was calm, quiet, and kind, kind of, but the grandpa was a really nice person. Damn. So it's safe to assume that Yu Jung was just a bad apple. Grandpa Jung was potentially just another one of her victims. When Yu Jung confessed to the police, she cited her motivation as, I just wanted to experience murder. I just wanted to know what it feels like. She said that she had been planning this murder since February, so a full three to four months. And with a confession and a crime scene full of illuminating evidence, the authorities prepared for her prosecution. She was officially charged with murder, damaging of a body, dismemberment, and a third Jesus. charge of body abandonment, scattering of the remains. On June 2nd, around 9 a.m., before appearing before the prosecution, she said two short sentences as the media questioned her for her crimes. She said, and I quote, I was out of my mind. Like, I didn't have my right mind. I'm sorry for the victim's family. Wow. Wow. You better back up. She's going to bite your face, dude. Why is she only answering the dude's, the dude's questions, not hers? Dude, she might be crazy. This is crazy. Wow. I don't I don't know why, but like th <laughs> their uniforms are so much different than America's and it's crazy. <laughs> I like if I see the, a US police officer with this little life vest on, bitch, I don't fear nothing. <laughs> I'm running, I'm hitting the feet, chat. <laughs> like our shit, dude, we got a military grade police, bro. Bulletproof vest, ARs in the trunk, you know what I mean? Just crazy stuff. These motherfuckers got whistles and little like even their fucking hats don't even look right, bro. They're little polos. Some ain't right. It looked like a Halloween outfit. Yeah, dude. It's great compared to like US. I don't know. 
She also ended her press interview with, thank you, which professionals believe that she copied from past criminals' interviews, behaviors, and attitudes. Wow. Yeah. So Why? a lot like, of like killers. She acted weird? Yeah. Like a lot of killers in documentaries, they'll give press conferences and like end it with a thank you in Korea. Mm. And I guess the way she said it didn't feel natural. It kind of felt like mocking behavior. Mm. Not mocking, but copied behavior. Mm. So many netizens who followed mm. this case as it blew up have criticized her words here, believing that her apology is this pathetic attempt at appealing for a lower sentence. They said that she was using her childlike innocence or her youthful facial features to try and get away with murder. Like maybe if the grandfather was a terrible person and she murdered him because he, she was just getting abused or something, maybe, yeah. But like, lady, you went out, watched documentaries, Googled what it's like to kill someone, found some some random tutor that had nothing to do with anything and murdered her because you wanted her life, bro. Like, what? Murder. However, due to this case blowing up, there's a chance that the high-profile nature is going to pressure authorities to sentence her with a much stricter sentence. Yet the length of a sentence doesn't seem to mean much to Yujung. According to police, she's doing great in jail. What? She's calm and not the least bit scared or anxious. She's eating well, sleeping well, and not feeling much remorse, or at least none that people can see. Side note, netizens were so enraged about this comment that many of them dug into the Busan prison menu, and they found out that the prisoners were eating better food than given to the military during their services. Uh oh my god. The menu is high in quality, lots of healthy options, fresh veggies, and even has- Send it to a prison in, in, in America, dude. That would correct it real fast. What? Oh my goodness, it smelled like tuna fish and tilapia in that bitch. Oh my. Dessert options. Netizens were wondering how the food is better than the food that they eat at home. And there were questions of, should our tax money really be used in this way? After her appearance in front of the media on June 2nd, her results from a test that measures psychopathy was released four days later on the 6th. Mm -hmm. The psychopath test was created by a Canadian psychologist, Dr. Robert D. Hare, in the 70s. Mm. It's called the Hare Psychopathy Checklist, and it asks 20 questions that are supposed to hone in on your true nature. Professionals allegedly use it to assess cases of psychopathy. Dude, and do we have any psychologists in here? I want to take this test. I want to see if I'm a killer or something. And it has even been described as the single best predictor of violent behavior currently available. The psychopathy measurement test functions on a scale out of 40. So the lower the score, the least likely you are to have traits of a psychopath. So psychopaths, they typically score on average of 25. You're not that a killer? Yeah, I'm, I'm not a killer. Yet. <laughs> Sorry, play the video. Indicates a very likely tendency to be a psychopath. I think normal people fall around like the five or six range. But some of the prompts or questions, I guess, include, and you answer them yourself. So you would answer like, oh, I strongly disagree, somewhat disagree, disagree, and then I'm neutral, does not apply, mm. like all these things. And they would say things like, I generally evade responsibility and do not answer to anyone in my life. Yeah. Yeah. So that's Ooh. Ooh, shit. No, no, I, I, I take responsibility. Sometimes. I leave, sometimes. From what I know, the test isn't multiple choice, and you have to write an essay. Oh, fuck that. I'm not writing shit. Fuck it. I'll just say I'm not a killer. I'm good. That's like really easily you can pick whatever you want. Yeah. So is it in her best interest to fake that she is? I mean, probably not, because psychopathy is not related to being in a state of psychosis. Mm -hmm. You are not, like, you're still in the right headspace. Mm -hmm. You just lack empathy and all these other things, but mm, okay. And um, they would say things like, "I have a grandiose sense of self worth. I have a history of exhibiting cruelty to others, and the patient rates themselves." Mm. On her first evaluation, Yu Jung scored fifteen points out of forty. What? And even though fifteen is higher than the normal range, which is about five to six for a normal person, it's still below twenty five points, which is the threshold for psychopathy. However. On June 7th, she went through a second evaluation and she reportedly received a score of 28 points. Dang. Some notable comparable scores include Ted Bundy, who got um, 39 out of 40. And Dang. John Wayne Gacy, the clown killer, got 27 out of 40. So she scored um, one point higher than John Wayne Gacy. She ranked one I point. Know, I know, she, yo, that motherfucker. Matt John Wayne Gacy, when when he sees her in hell, yeah, no, it's up for her. It's on site. He gonna be mad as shit. 
he gonna be like, you want up me, ho? You want up me? Do you know who I am? You know what I mean? Like, hell, he gonna, he gonna be mad. Higher than I, Like, I'm gonna be honest. If I'm a murderer, I'm going 40 for 40, bitch. You got me for my score gonna be the highest. Stop, not nah, that. Cause what would I look like being under Ted Bundy? Fuck out of here. What I look like, hell no. My shit gonna be on top. Son, Kenji, I'm best at everything. I'm gonna get number one on this motherfucking test. I'm sorry, I apologize. Wusun as well, which is a notorious serial killer in Korea. He kidnapped and murdered eight women. He scored 27 points. Oh. She scored 28. I will say though, the test has been criticized by some researchers and experts, but regardless of what you think a score indicates or doesn't indicate, it's clear that Jung Yoo Jung was at least not a normal person mm -hmm. and at most a budding serial killer. Police found evidence that she had been contacting multiple tutors. According to wow. a professor, Oh Yoon Sung, a specialist in criminal psychology, they said if she hadn't been caught on her first kill, there's almost a 100% chance that she would have killed again. I, yeah, I can see that. But the Scary. fact that the way she did it for the first time, it's so stupid. Yeah, really so dumb. I think that's where a lot of people say the grandiose sense of self comes into play. A lot of these psychopaths sometimes overestimate their intelligence and ability to... About come. dumb as hell. First of all, they got CTV cameras everywhere. I'm putting a body in a blender, bitch. I'm going to get me a motherfucking blender. Ding, 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 ding. And I'm, I'm putting that motherfucker down a drain or something, dude. I don't know if that'll work. I'll probably clog my toilet. Accomplish things. Is the speculation? Noted, Kenji. But I would never do it. I would never do it. But I'm just saying, like, if you got a bunch of cameras outside, why would you go outside? You see what I'm saying? Because she does. She did seem pretty confident in that CCTV video. It just, yeah, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Now, another criminal psychology professor chimed in to state that they believed Chong Yoo Jung is a pathological liar. The professor even goes as far to speculate that everything Chong Yoo Jung has stated so far, her obsession with true crime, her wanting to feel like what it's like to kill someone, all of that is a lie. Mm. All except for the fact that she killed Hannah. That is the only thing that they think we should take as fact. Nothing else should be considered. Oh, what the about her search history? Didn't she see like, she, she searched up how to, um, or what it feels like to kill someone? claims we might not even know how meticulously she's been planning or how far in advance or even what her final goal was another criminal psychologist states it's way too early to determine why she even killed they said that we as a society are quick to believe her reasonings not because we are gullible but because otherwise the message would be that no one is safe from such a random type of murder and monster mm. and that is more terrifying Mm. Now, side note, on June 8th, the Pusan police gave an award to the taxi driver who reported the crime to the police. However, the taxi driver refused to take the prize and he actually quit his job. According to colleagues, wow. media has been looking for this taxi driver, like hounding this man down. People around him said that he's terrified. He's has so much trauma from this encounter. He had driven this young woman with dismembered body parts in the trunk of his taxi at 3 a.m. The taxi driver is doing everything Damn. that he can to remain out of the public eye. He has not given any public interviews. And some theorize, because South Korea is notorious for letting people out, he does not want his name out there because he was that terrified of Chung Yoo Jung that if she is released... It, yo, if she gets released... Wait, wait, wait. So Korea lets people out, like, easily? Is that She said that's, like, a known thing. Yes. If she gets released after murdering and dismembering a body, dude? Oh, my God. If they have money, Korea's sentences suck. Really? That's very lenient. Their justice system sucks. Really? He believes that she will track him down and kill him. He's is smart. the speculation. Now, as for the tutoring app that Hannah had been utilizing to find clientele, a lot of tutors have deleted their profiles because of how easily accessible the tutor's personal information is. The original purpose of this app is to assure that the parents have tutors that are actually credible, that are going to the schools that they say they are, that are getting the grades that they say they are. The tutoring app, though, they don't background check or verify anything about the parents, mm. just the tutors. Mm. And they responded to these concerns and said, yes, okay, yeah, we get it. But because we cannot verify parents of the students in the app, it's, you know, what can we do? So they've done like little to wow. solve this problem. Wow. So people could just make a fake account again and just act like someone's parent. And what? And protect the tutors. 
And this type of crime is not unheard of in Korea. In 2022 December, one man faked his identity as a high school student and lured a female university student slash tutor to his house in an attempt to essay her. Wow. Reportedly in 2021, one man also faked his identity, kidnapped a university student that was a tutor using a similar... No, no, no. People need to find a new site. They need to find a new site. They need to find a new app, bro. They need to make it. Someone needs to make a, a rival app that actually identifies identities. There's no way that's even a thing. It's not hard to identify at or, or thingies, bro. I promise you it's not hard. A simple ID would do, dude. Something. App. Keeping like an ID and a picture of yourself. You feel me? Like hostage two for up to a type. month like, and subjecting what? her to many essays. It's disgusting. So this is the case as of right now. I am sure that there will be more developments, but um, I don't know. What are your thoughts on this case? I do think, um, and I'm obviously biased because I'm someone who is deep in this true crime world, but I think it's like the argument of video games. I don't think that there is any piece of media that can get someone to kill. Yeah. And I think the way There's she no way. went about it and just her callous nature in that CCTV footage. I play Call of Duty all the time. I don't, I, I'm gonna be honest, I never even touched a gun and I don't, I don't think I want to. You know what I mean? Probably one day just to learn how to protect myself. You know what I mean? Because it's just good to learn how to shoot a fucking gun, I guess. But like, uh, bro, I never had the urge to jump off a building 360 no scope and shoot someone in the forehead. W video though. I like her videos. I like it. I like it. What's her WeChat? Very nice. If you made it to the end of the video, comment um what you think about this case. And let me know what, what you think. I want to know your thoughts if you made it all the way to the end. Like, comment, subscribe, please.